back and I'm alive. I've been gone for a very long time. I'm so pleasantly surprised to come back and see all of the subscribers that have wanted to continue watching my videos. I have over 10,000 subscribers now with, you know, the small amount of videos that I've posted and um, I just wanted to say thank you so much and I really had no idea that I would get such a response to um, just the few videos that I posted. I'm really glad that you've all enjoyed them and thank you to the followers on Instagram that have shared their drawings that they've made based on the videos that I've posted. It really means a lot to me when I get to see that progress from everyone. Today, I'm going to be doing something different. I really want to make videos showing how to draw all sorts of things. You know, a lot of people want to learn how to draw faces and people and different animals. When I started drawing, that's what I was really interested in. So today I'm going to be showing how to section off the different proportions of the face so that you sort of remember how the face is proportioned and so that when you go to draw your own face, you kind of know where everything is. Kind of like what I did in how to draw your own pony video. Of course, when we start out, I'm going to start with a circle. A lot of people, when they start out drawing, they say, oh, I can't even draw a circle. I can't even draw a stick figure. The best way to do a circle is with your entire arm. Instead of just trying to draw a circle like this with your hand pressed against the paper, you move your entire arm in a circular motion and then you lightly set your pencil down and then you just continue going over that several times and then a circle forms and then you can kind of erase to get the more exact circle that you want. This is what you start with. So you start with the circle because that's an easy shape to start with. Then you want to bring down and make this longer, kind of like an upside down egg. Depending on what you want your face to look like is how long the face is going to be. So I'm going to make mine about this long. That's where the chin will be. So since this is a female face, I'm rounding the line from the side of the circle down to where the chin will be. Same thing with the other side. We're going to break up different sections of this face so that you can see the measurements of where everything is placed. So first, draw a line down the middle. All of your lines should be really light and smooth. If you're very first starting out, you know, and you're making the lines really dark, that's fine. You know, you can always leave the lines there and use it as a reference later. So let's erase this bottom circle so that it doesn't throw off the rest of our lines. And then one line halfway from the top to bottom. What you can do is section off five points along this line. You'll be able to get the perfect spacing. If you look at this line and you section it off into five this is about the spacing of the eyes, and then if you go like this, that's where you can place your eye. So if you notice, this is not going to look very pretty right now. I'm just placing everything. And once you know all the measurements, then you can go in and make it look really pretty. And I'll make it look pretty after, I promise. Or prettier anyway. So if you notice, one length of an eye is about the same distance between the two eyes. But again, you can make these a little bit further apart, a little bit closer together, and then that will add character to your drawing. Let's draw one more line. We're going to cut this in half right here from this point to this point. So basically one quarter of the way will be where the nose is. The way you draw a nose is it's a very small upside down U on either side and then it kind of goes up like this. Very simplified version of the nose anyway. And then if you divide this section into thirds, we'll be able to place the mouth. So this is where the mouth would be and then this is where the chin is. We might make her smiling. And the way you draw lips is usually there's a little dip 
right here where the top lip is, like a U shape, very, very small. And then it comes down like this. And then back up this way. So it's kind of like an M shape and then back up. To gesture sh someone smiling, you really don't have to have a, an entire U shape. Even if the outside of the lip is just slightly curved up, it shows that they're smiling. Well, when it's really slight, it's kind of a Mona Lisa smile, right? Depending on how big or small you want the lips. There's a Cupid's bow, which means there's a little dip at the very top. Some people have it. Some people have a very small one or less pronounced one. It's really small and it's about there. And then you just bring down the line to connect with the outside. You can get really creative and definitely add a little variation, but for the most part, this is what the proportions are. So the bottom part of the bottom lip is a little bit curved this way, but not too much. And then it's rounded here. And then back up this way to connect to the outside of the lip. This section here, this top half, we're going to divide into five. This first notch is going to be the bottom of the eyebrows. And then this very top one is the hairline. Comes down this way and about a third of the way starts curving down. I'll get to the hair in a minute. So as for the eyebrows, it really depends on the trend. <laughs> Right now, really full, thick eyebrows is the trend right now. So if you want to show eyebrows that are a little more full, a little more natural, they typically start right above the inner corner of the eye. So right above it, starting where this line is, you can take it and then they usually curve up. The best way to keep things even, when you're drawing a face straight forward, whenever you draw a line, just immediately do the same thing to the other side. Instead of drawing an entire eyebrow, adding all the details on one side, and then trying to duplicate that on the other side, it's better to just work your way little by little each side. Again, it's up to you how thick you want your eyebrows, how curved you want them. Usually the end of the eyebrow is just a little bit past the outer corner of the eye, maybe about halfway between the outer corner of the eye and the edge of the head. So I'm going to go ahead and erase these lines. Okay, so now that I've erased those guidelines, one more really important thing are <laughs> the ears. And so before I completely start going into detail, I'll show you how to place the ears. Typically the ears start around the eyebrows, so where the end of the eyebrow is, that's usually where the ears start. Comes down like this, like a half circle. And again, you want to make sure that you're making them the same length because for some reason I make silly mistakes like that. Like I really concentrate and focus on how good, you know, the whole picture will look and then I'll notice that, oh, one ear is way bigger than the other. I just I think of ears as sort of like wings. This comes out and around, and then there's a fold of skin that happens right here. So usually, even cartoons, even if there's only one line, you know, drawn within the ear, it's usually showing that fold of the skin. It's about there, and then it comes down and around. And then there's this little part that sticks out right here. And then... curves and down like that. I wish I had a better way to explain this. So here I'm drawing the rest of the hairline. Kind of comes down past the top of the ear. So the hair always comes down. Now that we have the hairline, the hair could be a lot more lifted from the actual scalp. It's always lifted at least a little bit, but if you want extra volume, then it'll be lifted even more. It usually, for the most part, follows the same shape as this shape, the scalp. And it comes down this way. The neck is not all the way out here. If you were to draw a continuous line from the outside of the eye, that's where the neck would be. 
from the angle I am. I know I'm going to have to fix the ears. If you'd like to add more of a lid, it just goes right above there. Whenever you do add a lid, this line is going to be closer to the inner corner of the eye. And then go farther as this curves up. Depending on where the light source is coming from, you can add the curve of the nose. I'm going to round, bring this line up around here and make the nose a little more button-like. And then with eyelashes, of course they come out like this. You can make them as long as you want. I like to go in and make just a few, just so I know how they will be curved. Towards the center of the eye, they're a little bit more straight looking and shorter towards the inner corner. So I like to just draw like five or six. I'm gonna go over all of this in um, some Micron inking pens, which I'll show you in a moment. And then same thing with the bottom lashes. You want to make them shorter, of course. The waterline is usually visible on the bottom lid. You have a waterline on the top too, but when you're looking straight at a face, you can really only see the bottom one. Now that she's looking like a very scary ghost, we want to add some irises. So, so one thing to note is you want to make sure that both irises, they aren't floating in the eye. So they aren't small and floating because if it looks like that, it'll look like she's very scared or surprised. Unless you want that, if you want where she's just looking straight at you. Again, everything you do, make sure that you're, you're doing both sides each time. You definitely wanna make sure that the pupils are the same size on both sides. It's really easy to make a person look very creepy. So when you draw a really small pupil, either like they're outside and there's a lot of really bright light or like they're very focused on something. If you draw the pupils bigger, it gives them like they're relaxed and calmly looking at something. When you're drawing eyebrows, I like to very lightly draw the shape and then I like to draw the individual hairs. And so if you look at an eyebrow of someone who has long defined hairs without it being filled in with makeup, you'll see the hairs grow straight up at the very center and then they start to grow out this way. That's how I usually draw eyebrows. And then there's also some hair that comes down this way. That's a good way to make it look fuller and thicker. There are a couple lines here go from the cupid's bow up to the nose. There's sometimes there's a line down here or there's just a line like this. For the hair I'm going to do a side part. Wherever the hair is parted the top of the hair sort of dips down comes up. Usually when there's a side part your hair goes this way so I know I'm gonna have that there so I'm erasing these lines so after the lines for the iris and pupil the eyelid needs to come down to the top of the pupil as well we just want her looking at us like she's saying oh hey so uh, why are you late I mean I'm not going to do a whole lot on the hair I think that should be a separate video and as soon as one is created, the link on her face. If there's no link there, that means the video hasn't been made yet, but there is one in the making. I'm going to go ahead and use Micron pens to ink her, and this is what they look like. I usually use Micron 02 for most lines, like the lines around her chin, and then I use 005 for really small details so I'm probably going to use this for her eyelashes and her eyebrows maybe the inside of her ear and also you know her hair so I'll go ahead and ink her and be right back and I used uh, Prismacolor markers and a little bit of colored pencil some white color pencil um, on her hair to show where the light is coming from. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was useful to you. If you know you're just starting out, give yourself a lot of patience. Learning this kind of stuff, you know, takes a long time and it takes lots of practice. So if you don't get it the first couple of times, it's okay. Go go easy on yourself and just know that it's a process. And if you keep drawing and you just don't stop, you will get better. So keep a sketchbook, practice, and uh, let me know what you would like to learn, 
how to draw next. Thank you so much everyone again for watching. If you want to show me how your drawing came out, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and the links to that are below. Everyone take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.